In this video, I introduce the Frobenius norm, a function that enables us to quantify the size of a matrix. We'll use a hands-on code demo in NumPy to solidify our understanding of the topic. The Frobenius norm is described by this equation here. It looks maybe a little complicated at first glance, but I promise you it's really easy, and you'll see that especially when we get into the hands-on code demo coming up. So we annotate the Frobenius norm using the same kind of norm notation as we used in earlier videos where we were talking about vector norms. So you can check that out if you haven't already, the norms and unit vectors topic that occurred, occurred earlier in this subject. So there we had a vector, which is lowercase and bold. Here we have a matrix, which is uppercase and bold. So it's a matrix X, and we have the same kind of double absolute value looking bars around the, the tensor, in this case, a matrix. And we specify that it's a Frobenius type norm with this capital letter F as subscript. Then to actually calculate the Frobenius norm, we consider each of the elements in our matrix X. So this is not in bold because this is an individual element of this bolded matrix tensor X. So we're considering each of the individual elements. So for I rows and J columns in the matrix X, we simply sum up across all of those individual elements, every I and J, but we square those elements before we sum them up. Once we've done that, so squaring each of the elements, summing them all up, and then taking the square root of that result, that gives us the Frobenius norm. This Frobenius norm is analogous to the L2 norm of a vector. Again, check out that norms and unit vectors video from earlier for a refresher. So like the L2 norm, the Frobenius norm measures the size of a matrix in terms of Euclidean distance. So that's just normal plain old distance like we would use to measure the dimensions of a room or how far you threw a ball or anything like that. Another way of thinking about the Frobenius norm is to think of it as the sum of the magnitude of all of the vectors in some matrix X. So you could consider, say, all of the columns in a vector to be individual vectors, and it's just the sum of the magnitude of each of those vectors. Let's look at a hands-on code demo to bring all of this to life. For a simple calculation, let's use NumPy to create a new matrix with some low values in it. So here's a matrix X with just four values, one, two, three, and four in a two by two arrangement. To calculate the Frobenius norm, just like in the equation, we square each of the elements, sum them up, and then take the square root. So let's do that here. Uh, let's take each of the elements and square them, one squared, two squared, three squared, and four squared, sum them all up, and then we could take the square root, and that gives us our result. The Frobenius norm of this matrix X is 5.5. Of course, we don't need to do it manually like this and you know, do all the individual mathematics to get the Frobenius norm. You can actually use the same function as we used earlier for the vector L2 norm. So this linear algebra norm method in the NumPy library, it gives us that exact same 5.5 value as if we calculate it manually. And quickly, here's how we can do it in PyTorch and TensorFlow as well. So note that if you're using PyTorch or TensorFlow norm methods, you need to have your um, matrix type, your tensor type more generally, uh, be a float. Um, so while NumPy works on integer typed tensors, uh, PyTorch and TensorFlow both require floats. So I'm just adding a, um, a period here to indicate that these should be float typed tensors in either case. So using the torch tensor method to create the same tensor as we had here in NumPy, and then we can use the torch norm method to get again the same result, 5.5, and same thing in TensorFlow. So hopefully that's straightforward enough. Up next is matrix multiplication, one of the most critical mathematical operations in machine learning. 